came out of. They said, well, that, you, know, he said you know, you without me is like Gladys Knight without the pips. You'll never go platinum. <laughs> oh, yeah. They threatened you. Unless you come up under this denomination right here, you're not going to be able to make it. <laughs> I know it was Jesus. <laughs> Brother Moss, the only thing that helped me <laughs> was I left man alone and I went back to the one that saved me. <laughs> the only thing, I, <laughs> I told a guy last night, I said, man, I can't preach and everything. The man went, oh man, you know, you shouldn't be saying that, you shouldn't. Have. And another woman said, no, we, we listen to you every Sunday. We own the church van going home and we listen to you and everything. But I want you to know something. I have no theological truth training. All I know to do is let God have his way. Open up my mouth and say, God help me. Because I can't help myself. God on his own took me out of darkness and translated me into the kingdom of his dear son. So when I'm getting ready to do mother none, I'm getting ready to walk like who I am. You can't bow me down no more. What I found out is no matter what God do for you, you got the naysayers that sit on the side and try to bring you down and make you feel like that you ain't nothing. Ain't going to never be nothing. And I tell them like Paul. Paul said in 1 Corinthians 15 chapter, he said, you are right. I'm not worthy for what God have given me. But he said, but by the grace of God, I am what I am. I thank God uh, that God looked past my every fault uh, and stop the madness. <laughs> Quit looking for them to see something in you. Because can't nobody ever see nothing in you until God show them. That's why there's some folks you just met think more of you than folk been knowing you all your life. <laughs> You just met them folks, but God has shown them. I tell you what, I, I can remember uh, being down low in my life, and there's a man, Bishop Don L. Lindsay. God used that man in my life. Because you, have you ever felt just down? Yeah. Have you ever felt like you just messed up so bad that God can't use you, and you're never going to do nothing or be nothing? I can remember walking by that man. He said one word. That man looked at me and he said, man, God got great things for you. Do you know what, Brother Conrad, that helped me? Because I had let people beat me down. I had let folk make me think that you done done so bad. I hadn't done nothing nobody else hadn't done. But I had let that foolishness get in my head. Instead of believing God. I know it was Jesus. What did I tell you? Hebrews 1. The Bible says here in Hebrews. Let me find it. Let me get it where I can read it from here. Hebrews 1. The Bible says God who had sundry times in divers manner spake in time past unto the fathers by the prophet. But in these last, have in these last days spoken unto us by his son whom he have appointed heir of all things by whom also he made the world who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person and upholding all things by the word of his power when he had I'm coming home I, I, I've been in church I, I've been on the pastor aid committee they can't understand how we operate y'all ain't got no pastor aid y'all ain't got no building fund y'all ain't got nothing and Negro we take up the money we put it in the bank and then we write a check for what we need Amen. ABC Amen. it's easy when ain't nobody got their hand in the pot the Bible says here and he Jesus did it that takes a lot of pressure off of me because I used to come to church trying to make the pastor like me, trying to make the mother see how good I was, trying to see the deacon see I done improved. I don't do that no more. I don't, I don't go, I don't, you know, I don't go over to the casino to eat by the star of death. When he had Jesus, he did it. And the Bible says in Romans 5, when we were yet without strength, it had nothing to do with me, but it had everything to do with him. You see, I, I keep telling you, I got a real mama. I don't know nothing about the mother kind of mama. But, but I got a mama that what she did for me didn't have nothing to do with me. My mama come pick me up at Arkansas State University. A policeman that hit me in my head, my head about that big. 
Uh huh. I, I done, you know, urinated on myself. I'm drunk. I'm cussing. I'm talking crazy and all that. Now, I don't know what my daddy would think. She just drug him along. But she come up there and she got me. He put me in the car. It didn't look too lovely right then. Uh huh. But now she's sitting up here in one in in the church where her son is. You see, I need somebody to love me for real. I don't need nobody to love me because of how I perform. Because I don't always perform the same. I don't always show up the right. I don't. I don't always feel the same way. So I need somebody that's gonna love me through the ugly times. I need somebody that's gonna love me when I ain't doing so well. And the Bible said that He Himself, that Jesus did it for me. He's a personal God unto me. I don't have to go through you. The Bible said there's one mediator between God and man, and that's the man, Christ Jesus. I don't have to go through now. I know what I said now. I don't have to go through now, man, in order to get to God. How you feel about me ain't got nothing to do with my relationship with God. Because you know what? People will hate you without a cause. Folks will hate you, Deborah and Craig, by what they heard somebody else said, somebody else said. Well, my mama said that your mama lied just like you was. Folks just tell her, you sometimes some lies, just be, how did that lie get out? You just had to make that up because it wasn't even, thank you, Jesus. He had by himself perished our sins, sat down on the right hand of the majesty on high. Ain't but two times that they said God sat down. The first time he is after he had finished creation. The Bible said he sat down, he rested. And the second time was after he finished my redemption and my salvation. When you sit down, now in the old tabernacle in the tent, they had the table of showbread, they, they had the, uh, uh, the, the, the lamp, they had the altar of incense, then passed the Holy of Holies in there, they had the Ark of the Covenant, but wasn't no child's in there, Dorothy. And the reason was, was because Jesus hadn't come. But when he came, when he got it, look here, when you get through, you can sit down. <laughs> Ain't nothing else to do. Stop the madness. I come to church, you want to work me to death. You out here every night of the week trying to get saved. And the Bible said that he himself, Jesus, I'm so happy I don't know what to do. Now that I know the truth, now that I know that I ain't got to pay no tithes, they ain't got to, to baptize me in Jesus' name and baptize me in the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Ghost. The parking lot need paving and you can't even pave it because you got to put a swimming pool in the church. I'm that preacher. Okay. I got about five minutes. Now let me get to what I've been preaching about. Let's go over here to John. Let's go over here to John. John, 19th verse. You there? Here the Bible says, and they asked them. This is a man that was born blind and, and Jesus uh, uh, spat on the ground and made clay of the spittle, anointed his eyes and told him to go wash in the pool of Salaam. And he went his way and when he washed, mother none, he came seeing this man had been blind for a long time. You see, I was messed up for 25 years because I forgot. I forgot who it was that helped me. I forgot. I forgot there wasn't none of these church folks and the, the deacons and all of them, wasn't none of them around when God blessed me. I, I forgot that, that, that couldn't nobody help me but God. I forgot. But I tell you what, after being miserable for 25 years in the church, uh, God showed me like he told the Galatians. He said, oh, you foolish Galatians. Who have be with you? You started in the spirit. Now you want to be made perfect in the flesh. Them folk couldn't help me at all. Just like I couldn't help them. But I went back to my help. 
David said, I'm going to lift up my eyes unto the hills from which cometh my help. Brother Carl Ray, ain't nothing like when you realize where your help come from. <laughs> when you realize where your help come from, everybody else can walk off. <laughs> when you realize where your help come from. That's the reason, Cherie, when, I, when I, I'm on a job, all the rest of them Negroes can get mad talking about they finna go home. Uh, my help come from right here. Uh, this right here gonna help me pay AP and L, it's gonna help me pay energy. I don't care about y'all got mad, the man don't know how to talk to ya. I'm not finna walk off from my help. Oh, my help come from the Lord. He says, uh, and they asked him, saying, is this your son? Who you said was born blind? You see, God is God, the the devil, Shepherd, is always going to question what God has done in your life. He always going to question. Uh huh. Uh huh. When I started the church, oh, that was a big laughing joke right there. Oh, now he preaching. He preaching now. But I want you to know something. God will bless you, but. But he first going to embarrass you. You see, God got to take all that out of you where you want to hold your chest up about who you think you are because God resists the proud. Watch this in verse 20. We almost know. He said, his parents answered them and said, we know that this is our son and that he was born blind. You see, if you want to ask somebody about what God has done for me, you don't need to go ask my mama. You ask me. His parents said, we is our son. And he was born blind. Now we know that. But by what means? He now seeth, we know not, what have opened his eyes. The last time we saw him, he was blind. Yeah, we know not. He is of age, ask him. He shall speak for himself. Look at verse 22, we're going home. He said, these words spake his parents because they feared the Jews, for the Jews had agreed already that if any man did confess that he was Christ, he should be put out of the synagogue. Therefore said his parents, he is of age, ask him. Then again called they the man that was blind and said unto him, give God the praise. We know that this man is a sinner. Last verse, we're going home. Uh, the man that had washed in the pool, that Jesus had took some clay and spit on it. You see, the way that he bring you ain't going to be pretty. The way that he bring you going to make you look like a fool. But you'll tell you what you got to want him. Worse than you want that next breath you trying to get. <laughs> you got to get to the place where you said, God save me. <laughs> I can't go another step without you. <laughs> Lord, if you save me, just deliver me. <laughs> God, take me out of this. And he says, uh, he answered and said, whether he be sinner or no. You see, they want to take you into deep theological questions. Uh, well, who was first and where did Adam's child and who did they marry? And if he didn't have a sister, how did he marry somebody? And you know what? Uh, he did not know hermeneutics or homiletics, but the, uh, the man said this right here. He said, I don't know what he is. I know not, but he said one thing. One thing I know. I don't know whether or not the, the Greek and the, the Hebrew, I, I don't know if they found the Dead Sea Scrolls or whether the, the, the thank you, Jesus. He said one thing. Let me see. What verse I'm in? 35. One thing I know. Whereas I was blind. Now I see. Uh, Paul said from this point on, let no man bother me. I ain't arguing with nobody about the Bible. I ain't arguing with nobody about who God and whatever and everything. Fellas, but I know this one thing right here. I don't know all about God and where he is and heaven and all that right there. But this one thing I know. That, that, that I was blind. But now I see. <laughs> Where I couldn't go home at night, I goes home and I sleeps well. <laughs> Where I thought my mind was confused and folks was wearing me and I couldn't find no peace. <laughs> I want you to know that he's a doctor. Yeah. 
in the sick room. I want you to know he's a lawyer in a courtroom. He's Mary's baby. He's a Pharisee of 10,000. He's a lover of mass. I can't preach no more. Clap your hands for the Lord.